Welcome to Volrath University. I'm Chef Rich, and today we're here to talk to you about vacuum packaging. Vacuum packing is an excellent way to extend the shelf life of any food, be it fresh, refrigerated, or frozen. It just extends the life by several times over other methods of storage. Okay, before we get into an actual demonstration of product, let's first go over the controls on the in-chamber machine. As you can see, we have nine different controls, or nine different programs we can set. And to set a program, it's very simple. We hit the program button, the program number flashes, we then hit the vacuum button. That tells us how many seconds that program is going to vacuum for. So we can adjust then the time there, either up or down, depending on what we want. Then we hit the, press the seal button. That tells us how many seconds we're going to seal for. About three seconds on our standard bag is, is right. Then we hit the program button again. Now that program is set. Number five then we know is set for 11 seconds of vacuum and three seconds of seal time. Okay, let's actually vacuum pack some product. As you can see, I'm holding our bag uh, dispensing system, which makes it very easy, as I said, to dispense the bags, but also it's nice because it has the item number and size of the bag right on the package, so it's easy to see which bag you're using. Okay? So if we take a bag, well, let's just do some oranges, put the oranges in the bag. You want to be careful that you don't get the edge of the bag, the seal area, um, wet, or if you're putting in uh, fatty items, you want to get anything on that because as the heat bar comes down to seal that, you want to make sure it's a good clean surface. So if you are going to have something that's a little fattier, such as cheeses, just take some care in making sure that you don't get any fat or liquids really too heavily on that area. So now we'll open the machine, and I should also at this point talk about in the machine are spacers. These are simply solid pieces of material that are to take up space inside the chamber. Because when we close the lid, we're going to vacuum, excuse me, we're going to vacuum the air out of the chamber. And we can see how much air we're vacuuming out of the chamber by the pressure gauge here, telling us how many negative atmospheres we're going. And what we want to do is we want to get this down kind of near negative one atmosphere for a really tight pack. But if we have a more delicate product, we may want to stay down here on the lower end of that scale. And this time is really a function of how much air needs to be pulled out of this chamber. The more space we have in the chamber, the shorter the vacuum times can be. There really isn't a set time that I could tell you, say, for a six ounce fillet, because it's really a function of how much air you're pulling out of the unit. Okay, so let's go ahead and demonstrate now with some oranges. So I've put our oranges in the bag, we'll lay the oranges in the chamber, and we want the edge of the bag just slightly over the um, sealer bar. Now we'll go ahead and turn the machine on. We'll select program number one, and again to review, we want to see how much time we're going to be vacuuming on program number one. We'll hit the vacuum button. That's 15 seconds. Now we're going to close the lid. Now, what we're hearing now is the air being evacuated from the chamber. Okay, it's taking all of the air, both in the bag, out of the bag, around the product, and evacuating and creating a negative pressure in the chamber. The next thing we're going to hear is the sealer bar now sealing the bag. And then the next thing we're going to hear is the air from the room being let back into the chamber. And that's, now that's the air coming back in around the bag and pressing down on the bag. And, and that's where we really get this, this look where the bag is shrinking down around the product. Okay, so here we've got a nice product now. Very easy to store, very easy to transport for caterers or it takes up less space in, in the cooler or the refrigerator. So something like this, like orange is very firm. As you can see, we can do that. Now, let's do something a little more delicate, like tomatoes. Okay, we'll take another bag, and we'll put our tomatoes in the bag. Now, when you're also, one other point I want to talk about is when you load the bags, you want to be careful that for any product that has, it's a little bit fattier or a lot of moisture, you want to make sure you don't get this edge of the bag uh, either coated with the fat or too much liquid on it because what happens is that's going to come between the two layers of the bag and when the heat bar tries to seal it may not form the best seal so you want to make sure to try to keep this clean and if what happens if you do get a little um, fat on there say from a meat or some cheese you could just take the a towel or something and wipe it off okay so now we have our tomatoes and tomatoes being a more delicate product we don't want to pull such a tight vacuum on them so we're going to took adjust the uh, 
the vacuum pressure down a little bit, cut the pack on it so we're not so high up on our dial, stay more on the low end of the dial. So let's try to do some tomatoes. We have five seconds of vacuum time. Okay, so we're sealing the bar, we're sealing the bag with the bar. We're gonna let the air back in. And then our tomatoes will be vacuum packed but with a lot less pressure than what we used on the oranges. You can see the difference here. This is just a general good way to, to food preservation and to transport, whereas this being a little bit more tighter pack, you're going to get less air in the bag and get a little bit better preservation, but with a firmer product, with something more delicate, you can't quite do that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to demonstrate will be cheese. Now cheese, again, being a firm product, we want to pull a, a good vacuum, make sure we get it very, very tight. Now this is a, a product where I was talking about, you want to kind of be careful that we don't get too much of this fat from the cheese on the bag where we're going to be sealing. So we'll put the cheese in the bag. And now this being, again, a more firm product, we'll go back to our program number one. And on that, we have 15 seconds of vacuum, so let's vacuum pack our cheese. Again, we're vacuum packing all the air out from this entire chamber. What we'll show you next is a demonstration with some water. It really illustrates exactly what's happening in the machine and how we're creating this vacuum outside of the bag, in the bag, all around the product, and how these machines really are different from an, uh, an out-of-chamber machine. So the cheese is now sealing. We'll let the air back in. And we have our cheese now vacuum packed. Cheese is nice because you can buy a wheel of cheese or a big block cut it down to the size you use, vacuum pack it in portions like this and extend the life. Okay, now we're going to vacuum pack water. And it sounds funny, but I know you never would vacuum pack water for any reason, but it really helps to illustrate how this machine works. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to fill the bag with water, and now we're going to have to remove one of our spacer bars or plates so that we can lay the bag below the top of our sealer bar so that the water will lay below the bar. Okay, so we all know from science class that water has air that's trapped in it. And we're going to show you then how this machine works with a vacuum by vacuum packing some water, just ordinary tap water. Okay, let's go ahead and put the water in the machine. And then once again to review, we want to make sure we have the edge of the bag slightly over the edge of the sealer bar. And now let's go ahead and close the machine. And what's happening again is, is we're going to take the air that's in the machine and evacuate and create less pressure outside of the water than there is in the water. We know that the air in the water is under a set pressure and what you're going to see is as the air molecules expand and come out of the water, as you can see starting there, it's actually going to look like the water is boiling. That's actually because there's less pressure or a vacuum in this chamber and it's the pressure of the air in the water is greater than the pressure outside of the air or in the chamber and that's why it looks like it's boiling. Now we're sealing and then in a second we'll let the air back in and that's what's actually going to collapse the bag down under atmospheric pressure and then the lid will open and there we have our water now just to show nothing really special about this other than just to show you again that this is where we created a vacuum inside the machine to pull the air actually out of the water Well, I hope we've showed you a little bit about vacuum packaging. I'm Chef Rich. Thank you for attending today's session of Volrath University.